Is your necklace saying? I can just see fuck. Does it say fuck it? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it does. Hello, welcome. Hello. So, Paul and Anand from Generation Press. How are you guys today? Very well, thank you. Yeah, all good. Hello, <laughs> <laughs> you, you look like you look like you, you were so far relaxed uh, last week, and then you look like naughty little schoolboys this morning, like waiting in the corner. <laughs> we vanished from the classroom. <laughs> I'm sure it'll. Uh, I'm sure we'll get 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 relaxed. Um, so we met, I think, three years ago. Was it 2021? Yes, I've been in... looking for you for years introduced by the powerhouse that's built was it just probably yeah, yeah. <laughs> you yes. know, i imagine you must be neighbors with similar accents and yeah although well but now i'm over liverpool way so um yeah, I'm getting twinges of a whole other accent just to make it even more embarrassing. My mixture of <laughs> Liverpool, Dutch, Yorkshire, Newcastle. Um, so, first of all, yeah, I'm just, that's another stumble from me, so we'll get that out. Um, well, like, if we kick off with the first question and then we can like get into hearing about your story just like to kick off. So the the first question that I always ask is about how you started on your own path. So we're wanting to talk about how people have been doing dis businesses differently um, and you definitely been doing it differently from a good while ago. So we could hear about it from both sides of it because, Paul, you're from like the OG and Anand, you've come in and it's been like where you were meant to be in your place, but how that yeah, came well, about. I could change my job title to OG. That would be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> original, <laughs> the original gangster, original goat, like. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, uh, I guess it goes back a long way being a fourth generation printer. And growing up in that environment of, you know, you're going to be a printer one day, it was kind of get a trade under your belt and then you can do what you like. And so I took the advice my dad and my granddad sort of um, led me to believe that's what I should do. And I, I kind of thought, okay, but I need an identity within that kind of... Uh, you know, what's your future hold? And it and it was a bit of a struggle. I did my apprenticeship, did some traveling, tried to be a chef, a terrible one, and realized actually maybe I could be a good printer rather than a terrible chef. But <laughs> it, 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 in in becoming that, or in it becoming coming back to print after traveling, I kind of realized I wanted my own identity within that kind of legacy of what went before me. And my dad had a printing business, family business, and there was parts of it that I loved and parts of it that I didn't really kind of uh, believe in as much. So it was the design and the quality side of what my dad did as a printer back then. You would have done from designers to the local businesses to local kind of lord and lady. Mark would have their stationery printed. but. Uh, I kind of thought I wanted to do it differently, not consciously. It was never kind of, I want to do something that is different to anyone else. I just wanted to do it in the way that I felt comfortable and would have my own identity. So uh, having an idea that I just love design and working with designers, it just became a natural path to kind of want to work in a kind of quality environment. But also, it was a, you know, back in those days, it was a, it was a workshop. There were inks, there were chemicals, there were many various characters in the industry. And I just thought I'd want to do it clean as well. And at that time, this is like 25 years ago, I just want to do it clean. 
and what did that mean i didn't really know i just didn't want to be part of something that wasn't kind of progressive in a way i didn't want to be kind of identified as what went before me or yeah yeah um what what could we become it was let's just it was almost like um naivety was our superpower <laughs> if design industry would always be challenging conventions so you would someone would say can you do this and rather than saying oh no you can't do this because this this and this went before us I was yeah. kind of young enough and bold enough to say oh, I don't know let's give it a go so you know one thing leads to another and you stumble into kind of different areas you find out that you don't need that chemical or you don't need that kind of or inks a really good example because everything was oil based as in petroleum oil yeah we we quickly found a vegetable based ink and this is like 23 years ago probably 24 years ago and then total visionary well i don't know it didn't feel like it at the time but <laughs> maybe a bit yeah. was everyone having a go like what we're doing this for why is this why are we making this because I'm sure well, there's like costs and stuff involved in that as well. Yeah, but we were kind of small and nimble. I had my dad still, so I sort of took over from my dad. And there was a couple of staff that were also young, but I was the youngest. So it was kind of, I, I had to learn to be humble and, you know, manage people that were more experienced and better than me in a sense. So I was just sort of getting the work and then we were just cutting our own path in what we were trying to do so there was never any obstacles to overcome it was just like well what if we do this or what if we can do that and give it a go and it started to work because I think convention had held everyone in our industry back for a long time yeah and actually just experimenting and reviewing how you do things was quite a healthy process so uh and then I don't know where really it becomes. It was just a natural progression. So we we were carbon neutral back in, I think we became carbon neutral in 2006. Wow. And then uh, uh, I met Zoe, who's handing up six fingers, if say, 2006. <laughs> Zoe Hi, Zoe. <laughs> She's there in the background, but she was a customer. And she'd had a history with Body Shop and she had come in and seen what we were doing and worked with us and had was very complimentary and saying, well, this is really interesting. It's sort of not dissimilar to say what Body Shop had done and were doing and gone by in their time. And we had a similar ethos as, a, as if to say, I didn't know this. This wasn't conscious in, the, in any way, but it was just to do things kind of with uh, principles maybe yeah. and uh, it, it kind of led off from there but the work was always that was always in the background it was never about how your business is in you know cleaner or it was just the way you want to run your business it wasn't a marketing tool or anything like that I don't think we ever realized we were doing it until about 2017 or maybe, you know, in that period where people were saying, oh, it's a thing. <laughs> in my mind, I, I can't actually concentrate on one avenue, but it was a lot of different <laughs> things happening to try and create a business that was interesting, exciting to be in, to work with people you want to work with in an environment that we want to work in. We're in the 16th century barn. So that has a kind of bearing on your consciousness every day as and you're working for when you're a, looking out looking outside at those views at the nature and if you're pumping out the chemicals daily it's not yeah, exactly you're aware of your environment much more if you you know I, I live in the town and I work in the countryside I grew up in the countryside so I've always had a consciousness for the countryside and what effect the world was having on it but in the only in a nature loving way. I'm not sort of, I don't get caught hugging trees too often. <laughs> uh, it, You'll be a nice book one day. <laughs> yeah, 
and chop you down before you know. And, uh, <laughs> That's quite an interesting point about 2017. Because around that sort of time, I was again <clears throat> working a lot more, like in the studio and stuff like that. And you could start to see brands and stuff kind of like taking things a lot more seriously on that side of things, which I think became a lot more apparent and like up until now as well it's like really apparent you know like it's yeah. like a massive it's no longer just like page 98 in a massive catalog our environmental credentials it's essentially the whole you know everyone's like doing that you know there was times when you know we were just like being told by clients potentially you know if we include your logo and and stuff you know uh could we have a bit of a discount and stuff, which I was found was quite funny because it's not my, I couldn't turn around, it's still, now I can't turn around and say, yeah, of course, but I've got to run it past the boss. But now it's um, a case of people, are, you know, wanting to be associated, to have us be a part of their supply chain is, you know, when you've got companies that are doing things properly in terms of environment or, you know, selection of stocks or just every the whole process, being associated that as part of the team, it's not just a client, it's almost like the bigger picture of your product, you know? I think, yeah, it was a business, you know, how does it become a niche as a business to be what we are? I don't define Generation Press as an environmental company. No. no. It's just from it's it. a part. It's, it's a part of what we do, you know, it's just a Yeah, part. and it, it, became, it became strategic to be able to say, do you know what, if you're going to choose us uh, uh, over another company, or did you know that we do this, this, and this while whilst we're producing some of the most beautiful work in our industry? Yeah. So it's, I would rather be defined as a business that produces beautiful work that just happens to take care of the environment, the materials we choose, the people we work with, the you know, the whole chain, the whole stakeholder thing with B Corp. You know, becoming a B Corp made it a bigger picture, but um, you know, because I was even saying as well, like we um, we brief, we briefly touched on it on um, the other day. But when we were discussing, when I first, I, I asked him as well before, I was like, why you know why were you doing this so early and stuff? And you've never had an answer, and that's just because it's part of what you're doing it. You know, like, like, <laughs> you know well, it wasn't that... for it was for uh, like genuine reasons, not in a marketing strategic ploy. Ethos of like from the beginning, which I think is amazing. You know, like. Uh, <laughs> I think I had a quote from Zoe before about say it's not just about compliance; it's always been our way of doing things. Yeah, yeah, and exactly. Think... You should use that. Yeah, we should make a T-shirt. <laughs> right. <laughs> but and then you were saying about 2017. But when did you join then? Because obviously, um, so, well, the two, generation so, of the, the fourth generation of the. That just seems like a sort of like time when I was more in the shoes. So I joined. Um, I can't remember. I've been here now, like um, 2013, 2000. Yeah, around that time. But it, it doesn't feel like. I'm sure it feels like it for him. But for me, it's just like time's just like you know, fl- you know, flown by. Just from out, I've been learning. So fr- uh, straight out of uni, came came down for like what two a week. Two, uh, a week. <laughs> I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> the company just like moved, like you know, to. Uh, you know, scrub uh, on how he's just constantly kept the company moving in a really exciting way. You know, we've never just done like when I first started, I started on the print blog, which I thought was amazing because like, everything that I'm sort of like doing now has been fully informed by that process from the start. And it was just, um, and then eventually allowed me to come up to the studio and speak to his clients and stuff, which, <laughs> no, but, um, you know, which has been an amazing journey to, you know, to be. To be... Know, to be fair, Anand did come down for a week to do some business cards for his course and, you know, we showed him. And I saw straight away the enthusiasm, the kind of the hunger to want to be in an industry that is quite a difficult ba- kind of Basically, I, of. I came here and the amount of samples that I took back to, because I had to go back to uni to finish my uh, degree. I t- took it back and I remember being at Brighton Station and I was like, I had like four tubes and like bags and stuff. And I took like, and that so was like, up in Leeds, wasn't it? So that's yeah, it's like, like it's, yeah, so it's yeah, quite yeah. the journey with all those tubes and stuff. To, like, take everything back and everyone at uni just sort of like crowded around and just like, just, oh, it was just amazing, you know, like to see things that everyone's been looking at online, to see it 
in your hands it's just like incredible i was you know stayed in it I must have taken so much from the sample shells and stuff which was just but like, i like that you made the journey down it's a bit like paul you sort of not without thought but sort of just a I need to do this differently. Like, like you yeah. say, you're the one taking everything back to where everyone's just looking on a screen, but yeah. you went down and you're in it and you're on the floor and you're loving all the craft and you're getting excited. And it's such a great team as well. We, you know, we've got, you know, everyone here has got, you know, so many talents in so many different areas where we all get together. It's just like every day we're just working on, you take it for granted, but every day, I take it for granted, like sometimes, but when you go down and you just think, hold on a minute, look, there's a, you know, job for like an amazing, you know, there's so many different like bespoke jobs going on and there's like, you know, simply, to be honest, we don't really do that many simple jobs, do we? You know, like there's always quite complicated, <laughs> right, challenging and like, hey, that's what it's all about, and, you know, for me, definitely, and all of us here, but it's just lovely to see the different types of things that we're you know constantly doing and when you step back and you just see after a month oh wow these are the bits we just produced and that's a day-to-day -day thing it's pretty amazing you know yeah i think that's what we like about our business is the progression it never stands still it's like design you know you're always trying to you know create something new and we're a part of that process so we want to be that business that people come to so I've always thought of us as kind of interpreters of design or if someone's designed something, we can uh, we can bring our skills and talents to enhance a project or to, you know, be a part of a project to make it better. And, you know, the best work we've ever done, you know, the likes of Build, Michael Placer Build, he goes back with us over 15 years and... It's just a pleasure to work with the likes of Michael Place and other agencies and designers and businesses, artists. You know, you never, you never, you never stop being challenged or feeling challenged to want to do better. And I think, you know, that's our niche is that we don't want to, anyone else can do it cheaper or the same or how they've always done it. We'll always look for that angle to make it add value to uh, what we do. Yeah. So I think that for me is the niche is to add value wherever we can to interpret ideas and that makes and the, it and the and the craft as well like i think in an ever digital ai driven robot world <laughs> like <laughs> to have some real human interaction and human working together and on craft but also with a progressive vision so it isn't like like uh, yeah, fuddy duddy fusty. It's like, it's that. It's the real bespoke specialness. The yeah, I love it. I think so. And uh, you know, if you're creating the niche, you've got to create an environment to allow that to flourish, and to create an environment. So, as but as far as being niche, you know, I've always seen my business or our business as a place for people to flourish so it's about autonomy and people's roles and the ability to feel as important as the person before them or after them in the process of a, a craft and allowing that to flourish is our niche in a sense or is is the ability to not or to feel think differently in terms of yeah we get we, a thing that's a theme that's kept coming up is about values that run through and I think that's what runs through so then the people are flourishing that you know it's everyone being allowed to think differently and being led by people thinking differently because they have another thing of like find your niche find your people and it's interesting like Anand comes down for a university project and ends up staying and Zoe just does a little look in and then ends up staying <laughs> so it's like and then also, like you say, how you're talking with the likes of Michael um, at Build and those other designers where it's you're finding your people all the time, both in the customers and the people that are working with, like everyone's sharing that finds it important, those principles that you were talking about. Exactly, exactly. And, you know, you can, you can, you can have a business that is just, form a leg you put it online if you have a thousand of these it'll cost you that much and what have you but it, you can't operate on that basis if you're a small business trying to be trying to trying to survive and exist in a market which uh, you know the race to the bottom is going on 
extremely fast in our industry. So to try and stand out and be better and offer a more human service service is is kind of what we need to be able to do to to exist in our kind of uh, marketplace or the ability to do what we do. Yeah, it's quite, quite, quite hard on that as well, though, because obviously everything is always like, well, a big part of things is price led, but sometimes find in certain projects and every project is different. It's like sometimes when you like uh, start with, you know, what you don't restrain yourself. Sometimes I've been speaking to clients and it's uh, it's almost like, you know, if you go sort of like and create exactly what you want to create, then like, for example, everyone here have got knowledge and you can do certain things. And then once you get to that point and then if price becomes an issue, then it's almost like, um, stepping that back to make it more cost effective but without diluting what the end you know what that, what that finished piece is you know and we we're, we're lucky to have the clients that allow us to kind of you know become a part of their team to kind of get to that solution no it's not just like oh we want this book or we want that it's like we're heavily <clears throat> involved in it from the start which is great you know which is like yeah uh, you know, it's more jive. like a creative partnership, isn't it, than just yeah. a service going get make that that much cheaper or get that that much quicker. It's more a collaborative process, which I think is yeah. really different. I'd say a lot of our stuff it starts with like it's that initial collaboration to get to that final piece, whether it's a, a you know a small sort of like concertina book for something. It's what we're always thinking about: what's the scalability of that? How is that going to then? you know what's that going to look like in five years time or like even two years time or then you've got like packaging and then you've got art books and art books are more like you're the best at art books are you to be honest like it's an art book <laughs> it's definitely better. you get paul <laughs> that's down, you know that's down to everything down to like how, you know small details on like how the you know the you know how all of the say you're using seven different stocks and and then you want that grain direction to be perfect throughout all of the seven different stocks, but then you want the stocks to be like the ro robots book we did. I thought it was amazing. You know, that book plan yeah. was, was incredible, wasn't it? That, I, you know, I'm thinking about that as he's talking there. It genuinely isn't about me. It's about me trying to orchestrate the best out of Anand and Chris and Carla and Graham. So when building a project like that, I would be tapping into every single person in the business to help me come up. You know, I'm just the conduit between the <laughs> client and the and the business really. So it is about the team. It's not I'm I I just happen to have done it a bit longer, but Nan's produced projects that I could only dream of achieving. So it's not it, it is about the team and the process. It's not I don't feel it is me. I'm lucky enough to be able to be in the chair sometimes. Sometimes running a business isn't that simple. Well I but, think uh, you've got is it the line of print print people planets? It's like it is those three things that are just key to everything. Exactly, exactly. So, you know, I'm, the one thing I always come back to, which my dad was very keen for me to learn when, you know, we were first starting out, was uh, you you can't do good if you're not in business or you can't do anything if you're not in business. You can't give it away. You can't, you know, you have to be sustainable as a business to be able to make a difference. So is you know we talk to clients and say well I can't afford that I can't afford this. You've got to think the project from a different angle and say well you know how do we add value to the budget that you have and I think that's where our niche comes in or creativity is to say okay how do we produce this so it adds value but doesn't cost you so much because we can't produce you know the same. If you if you had a commodity, someone else is always going to be able to produce that cheaper. So we have to be the creative. race to the bottom. Yeah, the race to the bottom. So how do we how do we sustain a business within that environment to allow us to sustain our business? So we have to be creative every day in working out how to create something more beautiful for less. And 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 the environmental side has always fed that. 
because if you understand all your products and their capabilities and where they came from if you care about something that you're selling and how it's made or where where you source you'll find that those products are genuinely much better but they're fighting the same cause they're still trying to remain sustainable as a business so they've got to find a product better and and affordable so if you put all of those ingredients into your products it doesn't have to cost more it's just the creativity of creating something better out of less and i think people feel the energy i'm a bit of an energy woo like it's maybe a bit woo woo but i think people feel care that's put into things so there's the care from yourself but also further down the supply chain it's all and then that's why I love that it's a brand now, a printer as a brand where people are wanting to ha- have that put on their box as like the packaging yeah. or the book that it's, it is interesting that it's like a printer as a brand, which I don't think you hear a lot of, but there's a, like, yeah, people I know do, what I you're do, about and want associated. Printers saying to us you know you're the only you're the only printer that has a recognizable brand or a logo you know what i mean but i the michael place has a lot to do with that <laughs> well that's the logo itself and no shade to him because it's brilliant um and it's all of how you do things because that's also what i say with, about with brand it's it's all of that work and the values and the care and the principles behind that go into that and that just is like the the badge of honor on top probably (laughs) (laughs) you're too humble paul you're not gonna take it are you (laughs) uh, (laughs) i did have a really a really good point but i've forgotten it now you can cut that piece if you like (laughs) (laughs) you can't remember it (laughs) <laughs> did i interrupt you no not at all not at all uh, well, I th- no you go well, i don't know you go on Ask me. <laughs> well i was gonna say the second question we've 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 covered it a bit really so i don't know um the second question is how do you see niche and how has it benefited your company and I, we've talked about it a bit, I think. But if, is there anything else that you'd like to add on that? You know what, what I was thinking, actually, while we were just discussing that, like, say, for example, when a client comes to you and they've got a form in their head, like, they, this is what it, they want it to be. That's, like, the bit where I feel like art, for me, is, like, a really good part of, like, let's say, a niche business because then we would like, almost look at that. And I could easily just say, yeah, cool, let's do that. Let's quote that. That's fine. Uh, but what I would tend to do is like, let's say I would look at the artwork, give, give the client a call and like, I much prefer just picking up the phone and just having a chat, which is a bit more less sort of like formal almost. You can just sort of ring up and then just ask certain few questions. And then the that, human that would... element again. Yeah, massively. Yeah. Then you just go back and then you just like, actually, what have you thought about this, 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 and this. And then that I'd say eight times out of 10 does really give a bit of a different direction to what the initial form was going to be let's say if it was going to be right right i want a case bound book because i does it necessarily need to be a case bound book i've had a look at the content usually i'd ask to have a little visual of what you know what content is you know and then like that allows me to then because like i said earlier we've just seen stuff day by day and working on different stocks and lucky to work with like high you know the most lovely papers and stuff and then little things just sort of like come about oh, i thought about this type of binding or this or if the case bound bindings you know works for it perfectly then i would like you know obviously suggest that but it's like you as well when you came to us you know for years we were trying to um I'm a very visual person, by the way. Yeah, it took me ages to learn how to write emails properly and things like that. <laughs> well, no visual sort of like, um, you know, like that's how I I was feel more comfortable in a visual way. So actually, then to turn around and be like, how do we translate our message as Generation Press? So then you came on board and absolutely smashed it out of the park. You know, like everything you did was like, oh wow, yeah, like well, even our interviews it was so nice. <laughs> And then the content oh, that you then you. gave us and worked with Mike with made our, our book. When you read that, I'm just like, wow, we couldn't have done that, you know? Just won an award as well, right? 
Yeah, <laughs> the most sustainable <laughs> book. We don't. We... <laughs> Yes, yeah, so yeah, we won those often, yeah. yeah. You got four, didn't you get four? We won that. We like, won not the for that, not for all of that, but other projects, like four projects, yeah, one thing. Four different, it was like the British Book Awards, and there were categories, and we entered four categories, and they were the first four categories of the night, and we won all four of them. <laughs> but, like, you know, it was like the any awards. <laughs> I wasn't there, so uh, I missed. Like the draw. Adele of... <laughs> The Adele of the Print Awards. <laughs> but luckily, Zoe was there. She won. A, she did a series of books that were amazing as well. So she won best series, and I won one sustainable book and a gallery catalog. But you know, it was just it's just lovely to get you know show the guys that everything we do is worth it in the end, and it is appreciated. And you know, it's not about ego. It's just about Giving everyone no, but it's the... that and that quality that you were saying, like it's the high high design, high like made with reason and made really well and with care exactly. and love and all those things. And I think you feel it back to the energy woo woo, but Yeah. I think, <laughs> exactly. and, I think and, you and feel it. If you go back to the niche, it's like, well what you know, what was it that got me going and I could see in an and was you know, you want to create products that aren't disposable. I know majority of what we do is ephemera, but at the same time, if it can be kept and uh, is precious, then it's not so disposable. There's a more sustainable side to what we do, and that's kind of the goal is to make something, you know, that's collected or is a use for your business. If I do something for yeah. you and it's no use, that's a waste of our time and your money. So... Let's... And world resources. Yeah. So... As my dad yeah. always say, that's a waste of world resources. <laughs> exactly. It's like, <laughs> it's like, why throw money away? I'd rather someone spend money that was going to make a bit real difference to their business and we can make a difference to their business than just throwing mud at the wall all the time. It's like offering okay. our experience to make sure they're not wasting their money, yeah. which is... You know, I really think, I think, yeah, I think a lot of things as well now is like, especially when you're producing something where, it, you know, like I see print as one aspect of what we do, which it is really, isn't it? You know, there's so many other processes that we do and we're you know, definitely into more of the packaging, but more on a creative basis, but always that thought pass there. But for me, it's like whether it's a book or a business card or something, there's a secondary purpose. Like sometimes when you see some of the stuff that we're, we're working on, it's like, you know, a lot of people are not even going to be able to ever have seen color plan let's say you know like if you look at the average people on you know see something that that's been produced beautifully like that it's like you know i i went through a, a phase when i first started getting um well I've got my, well this was my first job so like <laughs> 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 we're many employ each other so it's, uh... yeah but and just, you know, you know, just tags and things like that that you get on clothes and stuff like that. I collect them, I think they're great. And, yeah. and, and the stuff we're doing. Do the same. Certain business cards or just anything that we're working on. It's just like, you know, just to have that on your desk is just like amazing. Like we did this like range of amazing coasters, which I thought were uh, lovely. And it's just like some of the clients we gave them out to. I remember going to a studio with my friends, um, cola on and you can tell that they've just like just put them out and they're just used it but it's almost like you don't want to even use it because it's such a lovely piece you know so uh so yeah Art. It's, yeah definitely see it as products i don't see it as a throwaway for, you know like it's different because um you know even I, you know there's nothing that i would see on the shelves that i would be like oh yeah i'd probably throw that in a bit i'd definitely be keeping that or using it as like a, <laughs> you know, a really valuable sort of like matte caress at least you know <laughs> you know just <laughs> line of a book just there just like uh yes no oh, i think no. everything um, uh, you know that we uh, you know work on is, is definitely got a collectible value to it you know and also on the, you know as a counterpart to that is you know what's the best job you've ever done and it's always the next one so i never i was know, gonna say a, that was coming up actually i was just gonna say what's what's next well i think also we were just talking about niches and i was thinking about it before coming in to this is you know when i when we started and when anan joined it was about 
you know, trying to be contemporary, if you like, or we were contemporary because we weren't trying to be contemporary, if you see what I mean. So if you're if you're thinking differently or your creative thinking is taking you forward, and I, like the key for me, what's our niche is that we're not governed by what went before us and we're not conforming to what our industry says you should have, a brochure should be this, a book should be that, a business card should be that. It's like we're coming to it with a fresh view. We've got a narrative, your business or someone's business. We want to tell that story through their you know, the quality of the print that we can provide in into that brand. So it feels refreshed now because a part of our industry that is growing is the packaging side. Yeah. We've always we've always done packaging to a small degree, but with COVID and lockdown we had more time and we were able to do a lot more <laughs> a lot more R and D and we bought some yeah. machinery that allowed us to go into packaging and we've been developing but my key factor in this again, it's like starting again, it's like being back at the beginning, is that we don't do packaging like they have or they have or they have. It's like we're gonna we're gonna create the packaging that we want from recycled kind of materials or no glue or no tapes. Yeah. It's it's recyclable. Yeah. Well I love that when we were doing the interviews like you mentioned Anand, and I think Paul for yours, it was very much came out like that beginner's mindset. Yeah, definitely. for everything. I, yeah, I think every single like project. Yeah, like you say, it's it, it's either that or we're goldfish. Yeah, no, I'm <laughs> just come. You're either absolute Buddhist visionaries or goldfish. <laughs> yeah. I it think is. that's what keeps it fun, though, as well. You know, like <laughs> every business or everyone that you're working with have all got their. You know, everyone's completely different. So you know, that's what's amazing. You know, like I'd be bored if it was like say you had four. I don't think I've ever like seen, unless it's a reprint, like a reorder. Um, I don't think I've seen one that's exactly the same as the other one. There's always something slightly different, and whether that's a designer or us or whoever that's put, you know, who's who's made that part different, or we suggested it and stuff. Then, you know, that's what I think. I think is it's just amazing, really. And then, like you know, like as as uh, uh, Scrub saying there about the packaging. Um, you know, that's like an amazing sort of like thing to get into because it's very challenging on creating something that's, you know, we'd like, you know, less because, you know, when I first started, like, I, you know, illustrate a background and, you know, design and everything, but I've always been like the opposite to minimalism, just like maximalism, you know, just like... Love. He does think differently. You know, he, 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 he generation press think differently. This is the main man. Which is creativity, isn't it? It's, it's like a different whole... form. And then you've got like Sir Carlo that's here now in our team. Between us three, we've got three very different mindsets. And it's amazing to see how you know all our experience together can create something much better than any one of us could do ourselves, you know, which I think is great. Okay. So, you know, you set Carla on a, a project, she's working on it. She's, um, doing it completely differently better than yeah better than me basically <laughs> you know completely differently to how i would have even gone about it and it was amazing and then you come in and then i come in and we're just like all sub discussions and it's just growing to be like a really lovely process and but that but that that's that down fuels, to the right people as well again yeah it? it fuels the fire is the kind of challenge of you know we had a customer in this morning that you know, but these people have this, these people have that. And it's like, well, you know, that is the problem with packaging. It comes from China. You have to buy it in volume. You have to give, you're given what you're, whatever it is they give you. Yeah. And they can produce some wonderful work in China. But, you know. You know, some of these things you look at as well is like, they're amazing. Like, and like, like, you know, I'll be honest, the things that do come out of China, like you say, are incredible. You know, like when you see um, some of them. Yeah, can be. I mean, like, you know, when you do see some, but then when if you take them apart, I'm not saying anything is bad or anything like that, but when you see the flat space that all of the materials that make one box take up, then it's just like, oh, wow, okay, that can't be, that can't be good. Like, how can we do this better, use less, think about other parts of it? So it's not just about the form itself, it's how does that get moved around? So how does that get to a supplier? How do the person that's putting the products in there how are they going to interact with it how like they it can do the aesthetic well but that yeah yeah, yeah. and it's almost like the, the deeper layer is is where you, you know, come in 
the value is seen in how many processes you can have rather yeah. than how beautiful <laughs> it is or how the construction is part of the beauty of a box. Completely. And now I, I literally feel like I feel quite min- I'm more minimalism now, I would say, you know, just because it's almost down to, you know, like speaking to clients, so everyone does think, you know, more, more is more, <laughs> you know, like it is definitely like, okay, let's do this, let's do that. It's like, well done, why? when you could do this potentially and then that would give you all those things you're thinking about there but in more confidence and i feel like that applying that to things like packaging i think is like much better because then you get like moments where it's just like that's clever i wish i'd done that you know and then that's where it's like you know you did do that no but you know what i'm saying (laughs) (laughs) that's the win isn't it so yeah, it's all fine. No, that's nice. So, so the future's more in the world of packaging, and the less is the less is more in the packaging world. Yeah. Loads of minimalism yeah. is my favorite. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's a t-shirt. Yeah, that's a t-shirt. It's a little collaboration after this, and I red and white though only. <laughs> Loads of minimalism. Brand colors and stuff. Oh, well, that's been lovely. Thank Thank you so much. And I really appreciate your time. I love what you do. I loved working with you before. I've worked with you since on clients' print stuff, and it's beautiful. Um, Heartily recommend to anyone listening. (laughs) (laughs) And, um, yeah, let's leave it there. Is there anything final to add or...? I don't know. That was that sound effect. <laughs> I'm I just going to stop it there. <laughs>